Jose here from Train Me Please. A dog is going about a walk and enjoying it so far. Suddenly, she spots another dog in the distance. This specific dog has some characteristic that makes her feel a bit uneasy. Then, a loud motorcycle goes by. Another scary moment. A few more steps and she is now near a popular school. Kids come running out from the front door. One of them tries to touch her on top of her head and snap, a bite. This could very well be a case of trigger stacking and knowing about this can help us. Let's go. Let's start with a couple of definitions. A trigger can be anything in the environment that causes an undesirable and large reaction from your dog. For example, your dog might start barking at white dogs with long hair. That means that white long-haired dogs can be considered triggers for your dog to react. Trigger stacking is the stress accumulation due to exposure to several triggers, either at the same time or in a short amount of time, so that the level of reactivity cannot return to normal. Here's another example. A dog that is terrified of city trams sees one go by and then sees a stranger approaching. The dog is more likely to bite in this situation than if he had met the stranger in a calmer scenario. And here's one from my own personal life. I live in Melbourne, so let's do a takeaway coffee one. I don't particularly like when the barista gets my coffee order wrong. When the coffee comes boiling hot, also not great. I really don't like public holiday surcharge fees. Even worse is when I have to wait for more than 10 minutes for someone to simply put some coffee and soy milk in my keep cup. If several of these things happen in succession, I might say something nasty out loud. Either that or I'll walk away and shed a little tear. None of those things isolated would cause me to react in any way. But when you stack them together, it may very well push me over my tolerance threshold. Back to dogs. And another way of thinking about it, especially in regards to biting thresholds, is that each potential trigger can contribute a certain percentage to the potential for biting. For example, maybe seeing a large dog sits at 20%. A pat on the head contributes 40% to the bite threshold. A scooter clocks in at 50%. You put them all together and we have a combined score of 110%, which means that a bite can occur at this level. I will give you a few suggestions regarding what to do about all of this in just a second. But first, could you please just offer me some positive reinforcement and click the like button under the video? Thanks heaps! Dogs show how they feel using their body language and behavior. It is important that we respond to what they say. A growling dog is clearly indicating that something needs to change quite quickly. Maybe something scary or threatening is way too close and the dog needs more distance from it. Giving a dog more space from a certain potential trigger is usually a great idea and one that will help him not go over threshold. Another thing you could consider would be a well-planned desensitization and counter-conditioning plan regarding certain potential triggers. A behavior professional can help you with this. It is also important to add that often, before growling, snapping or biting, there are other body language signals that a dog can use. If we can make the situation better for the dog, when he turns his body away or moves his ears back, this would be a much preferred moment than when the dog is already growling or snapping. I will leave some references and additional information in the description box under the video. Question for you. Have you ever found yourself in a trigger stacking situation such as the one I mentioned earlier about the coffee? Let me know in the comment section below. Oh, and if you took some value from this video, you know what you could do? Well, two things. You can share it with someone that can benefit from this information and you could even buy me a coffee. I am not kidding, I'll leave a link to it in the description. The engage-disengage game would also be a fantastic protocol to address how your dog reacts to certain triggers. I've got a video about it right here. Cheers!